join me right now on Kumite TV. Back on the show, Ryan Robertson, Aftershock Flyweight Champion. What's going on, Ryan? Not much. Not much. Just, just training, usual. I'm catching you at work, right? What, what, what do you do as a job? Uh, I'm basically a salesman for a security company. Uh, it's pretty, pretty boring. <laughs> but uh, it pays the bills, so that, that's all that matters, really. Man, you have a hectic schedule because you do have a job, you know, a desk job, and then you have a yeah. gym where you coach at, and you got all these fighters that got fights coming up, and then now you're getting ready for your fight in a couple of weeks, or not even a couple of weeks, in yeah. a week, about a week, right? Man, how how do you handle all of that stuff? Um, I don't know. I've said it in my in my past interviews with you, mm -hmm. you and others um, that like. I found a way to juggle and, and a lot of my training camp is not actually me training. It's me coaching. Um, but it seems to work for me. So yeah, I just keep doing doing that. I just mainly look after the other other guys and, and my partner as well. Um, and then yeah, just try to separate the mindset between coaching and working the day job. So when I get to go coach and I go to go train with everyone. Uh, it's it's good. It's good fun. So I get to really invest and learn myself, even though I'm coaching. With that said, do you feel like when you step into the cage that you're fully prepared for your fights? Yeah, yeah, I I, I do. I I feel as long as I'm fit and I make weight, I feel like I'm I'm prepared for anyone who stands in front of me. Um, uh, I think I think I've got a pretty high fight IQ um, I don't I don't I might look, I might look wild when I fight but uh there is like a method behind my madness of, of how I'm fighting and the way I fight people so yeah I, I feel pretty prepared every time I fight the reason why I ask you is because you see a lot of fighters they're like man I gotta quit my job I gotta f invest fully into this fight career if I want to do something with it like what is your status on your fight career are you are you chasing after a goal in particular, or are you just fighting just to fight? Um, no, nah, I've, I've, I'm a goal orientated person, so I've always got goals. Um, at the moment, my goal is to, well, at the moment, just win and, and hopefully get a couple more belts. And then uh, I would like to, obviously, the main goal would be UFC or one championship would be would be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I'm working towards that, but one fight at a time and and then uh hopefully that like an opportunity presents itself and, and i can take it speaking of belts you know you have a bunch of belts you know you have a great resume and in your last fight you actually went for another belt xfc fight night one the flyweight title yep. you know you took on Stuart nickel you know what did you think yep. of that fight you know assess the performance that you had um i i walked away with it I walked away from that fight, even though I lost. Um, I walked away with a bunch of confidence. Uh, going into the fight, I I put a lot of uh, doubt on myself with the ground game of Stuart, and that if it hit the ground, you know, I was I was going to be in trouble, like straight away, and and probably get tapped out pretty quick. Uh, from what I heard, he's the pound for pound best black belt in Australia. Um, so to go two and a half rounds with 90% of the fight being on the ground um, and also nearly caught him a couple of times myself. So, uh, yeah, I, I walked away with that feeling pretty good. Um, would have liked to have kept it on the feet a bit more, uh, but he, he did well at uh, closing the gap and not giving me any space to be able to break away and strike again. So. You know, and then I fell into his his game with uh, nearly catching him a couple of times with some submissions, and and uh, that gave me some confidence to stay hang around on the ground, which obviously didn't work out for me. But you know, I'm, I was pretty happy with the performance overall. It was a it was a fun fight to watch, definitely, especially if you know the ground game. And uh, yeah, man, it seems like you learned a lot from that fight. Now you move on. To Eternal MMA 47, you're taking on Jack yep. Ferguson, a totally different fighter, right? 
yeah, well, definitely doesn't have the resume of the ground game of Stuart Nicholl. Um, to be honest, I don't know much about him. Uh, I haven't really done any research on him or anything. I'm just, I'm just happy to fight in my hometown again. Um, so normally I, I don't fight in my hometown uh, just because I take the stage away for my amateurs and stuff like that. So I give that that stage to them and and sort of sacrifice not fighting here. So. Now I've only got two amateurs on the card, so and they're down a bit lower, so it gives me a bit of time to, you know, go back and warm up and get ready and and that. So I'm pretty pretty pumped and excited to just be able to fight in Perth again. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I did. I think I think he's had some Muay Thai fights um, and he has had a few MMA fights. So yeah, whatever. I'm there to fight. I can fight anywhere. I can fight striking and I can fight on the ground. So, yeah. With your high level of IQ, you know, fight IQ, when you go in there without yeah. knowing anything about your opponent, is it almost yeah. beneficial? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes I think so. Um, like with the Stuart Nickel fight, I I knew how good Stuart was on the ground and that, that got to me. I was really nervous before the fight. I was warming up nervous. Um, you know, the leading in the in the camp leading up to the fight, like that played on my mind a lot. Um, so I think sometimes going in there without really caring about them, you know, I just get to concentrate on myself. Um, and I'm pretty good at working people out within the first 10, 15 seconds. So, yeah, I, I don't mind. I think, I think it's a bit beneficial. You actually started your pro career with Eternal in 2015. How far has the promotion come in such a short period of time, you know, in your eyes? Since the cage ban has been lifted, I can't remember what year that was. So it was only like two years ago, I think. Um, huge. The promotion's really stepped up their game and, uh, and yeah, they're, they're just getting bigger and better. So I think, I think they're pretty much going to be the number one Australian MMA show. Um, with the way that they're going and, and the, the goals that they're setting. So, yeah, it's, it's jumped hugely. So it's an awesome show to fight on. I think the Perth the Perth uh, HBF Stadium, where they have it now, and the way they set it up is the best show in Australia right now. The, the promotions right now, the top promotions in Australia is Eternal. You got Hex. Yeah. You got XFC. Yeah. And you fought for yeah. all of them. Yes. Yes, I have. They're they're all good shows to 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 fight on. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I forgot. Also, Diamondback, Diamondback, they're in Adelaide, right? They're another good yep. show that's going on right now. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'll be on their show November third. <laughs> so, I'm booked in for that. Hopefully, I get one more before the end of the year's out as well. So, we'll see what happens with that. That's phenomenal, man. I'm glad that you're staying active, you know. And uh, I think a lot of guys want to fight you, man, because you, you do test everybody that you step into the cage with. And you have a name. You have titles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think I, I'm a hard fight for, for everyone and even the, high, like the, the higher-ranked guys. Um, you know, I've beaten a, a few of them. And, um, yeah, I, I just love fighting. So I I'll fight them all. If they want to fight, I'm down. You mentioned yeah, earlier you got a it. couple guys fighting on this on the eternal card before you step out to you know face yep. your opponent. Talk about them, you know, and uh, their preparations and and kind of give them some shine right now. Yeah, man. Oh, definitely. They, um, so uh, I'll start off with Liam. Liam Hoskin. He uh, he's one of my amateurs. He's having it. This is will be his fourth amateur fight. Um, he had he's never fought anyone that's lost yet so he's just fought well his last one was a, a debuter um and the other two before that were three and oh when he fought them um yeah the first two fights super close split decisions um then the last one he won by a ninja choke something we've been working on uh as a game plan and um his style is like like a nate diaz sort of style he just forward pressure boxing just, uh, but he can do it all. He can grapple. He can, yeah. He's really exciting to watch. So um, definitely one to keep an eye on. 
Uh, and then we got uh, Blade Townsend. It'll be his debut. So first time. Um, he's, he's pretty explosive. Explosive young kid. He's only 18. So, um, yeah, he, he'll be really, really fun to watch. Uh, that'll be a good fight. So, yeah, definitely uh, people should tune in for, for those two. How many fighters do you have now at MFC? Um, I think about about ten. We've got about ten. Some are a bit uh, inactive at the moment, um, just with life stuff and and things going on. Uh, but yeah, the the main ones I got is myself, uh, Mark Familari, Christy, my my partner, um, and I got another. Yeah, the two that I mentioned and Deshaun. I got a fair few. Yeah, it's good. And then a few unactive guys. Deshaun was supposed to fight, I think, at Hex, right? What happened with that? Yeah. Matchup? Well, Hex. So he was matched on Hex, and then Hex had to move their their show, which was the same weekend as Eternal here in Perth. Uh, sorry, Eternal. Yeah, so That's Eternal right. here That's in right. Perth. Um, so I was like, I can't put Deshaun on there because I can't be here and there at the same time. Uh, so I was like, oh well. We have to cancel Deshaun being on that card, uh, and then he got a call up to fight on Eternal in the Gold Coast. So we we took that so he could uh, make sure he gets a fight. And, uh, yeah, that was another close close split decision. I think it was a split decision, so it was a close fight. What is the status on Christie? She went out to the War- One Warrior Series. She got a dominant win out there. You know, is she signed to One Championship or is she going out there for One Warriors again? Uh, one Warrior again. Um, we were hoping she was going to be on the October one, uh, which is in Tokyo, but uh, unable to get on that one unless you know maybe a fight falls through and she can jump in last minute. Uh, so we're looking at December for her. At the moment, she'll be fighting next weekend on the 31st uh, in Muay Thai. She'll be fighting for a state title in Muay Thai on Futures Muay Thai here in Perth. So at the moment, that's sort of it. And we're just we're, we're grinding and, and uh, tightening up technique, just prepping even more for, for when she steps back in there again and puts on a, another dominant performance. And, uh, yeah, the last one, they gave her a uh, what's called a warrior bonus. So, yeah, a bit of a bonus for her performance. So that was really good. She uh, made a statement in front of uh, the people that matter. So, yeah, it was a good start, good start to the to her career. Did you guys take a little uh, vacation after that? I think I saw something. Yeah, yeah, we went to Bali. Went to Bali for two weeks. So I had we went over there for my best mate's wedding. Uh, so the first week was all about the wedding and we're like, nah, no, for, for one week there's no training. We're just going to enjoy ourselves i think about two days in we had to go do something um but uh but yeah the wedding was amazing then we trained out at bali mma um that was that was really cool we really enjoyed that great people great training um everyone there that trains there is hungry so yeah it was really good a bunch of high level guys there some some uh girls and guys that are on one already so yeah no, it was really good training there yeah, definitely. Um, now, in the main event of Eternal 47, you got yep. Paul Loga versus Steve Ursek. Yeah. They're both flyweights, right? And uh, yeah, you know, yep. it seems like it's like a title eliminator thing going on. You know, are you going to have your yep. eye on that? Because I'm pretty sure you want to fight for the title, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd love to fight for the title. Um, uh, I, um, yeah, I'm pumped. I, I'm pumped to watch them two fight. That That's going to be a really good fight. Um, yeah, yeah, I've I've got my eye on the title, so I just keep fighting at the moment, and like I said, hopefully opportunities pop up and and I can get that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's I'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. Uh, I've I've been training with Steve Erseg, so there's not many flyweights here in Perth, so we're we're sort sort of all teaming up together to improve each other and uh, and take on the rest of Australia. So that's our plan. Mitch Martin, he's the reigning champion right now. You know, what is your yes. breakdown on him? When you watch him fight, what impresses you about him? Uh, man, he's he's tough. Um, I've fought Mitch. He was my first pro fight. Um, I lost to him at, by a triangle. Uh, yeah, man, he's he's got stamina. He never gasses. 
Uh, he hits hard. He's he's awkward, so he's really hard to time. Um, and and yeah, he's just tough. He he he's got that quit or die. Uh, sorry, don't quit. You know, attitude. He'll just fight till the end. Um, so I reckon he'll be get signed to the UFC pretty soon. I think they're just waiting for a call up. Um, yeah, he, he'll he'll do well. He'll do well in the UFC for sure. But I'm pretty sure you want that rematch, right? You want to get that back. Ah, uh, he's too, he, he's big. I want to stick in flyweight. Um, I did this. I've I've done that for most of my career. Is like four of my fights um, have been out of my weight division, uh, and I haven't done very well <laughs> outside of my weight division. Um, so yeah, my my plan for the future of of with my career is stick stick in the flyweight division. I do well there, so that that's the plan. Um, and I, I'm friends with Mitch, so. I, I hope he does well. I, I think he will. I think he'll do great. All right, one last thing before I let you go. UFC 243 is going to happen in Melbourne in October. You know, the biggest yeah. fight, Robert Whitaker versus Israel Adesanya. Now, what is your thoughts on this fight and uh, the breakdown and, and your prediction? All right, so amazing fight. I cannot wait for this. Um, I think I think Robert wins. I think Whitaker beat, beats Adesanya. Um, Adesanya is no joke. Uh, you know he's he's fought at the top, and um, but I, I just think Robert is his overall MMA game and how to mix it together is just a bit better than Adesanya's. Um, and also Robert Robert doesn't gas either. Like he's he's got the stamina to push for five rounds. Um, and I think he just mixes it mixes it up really well. Uh, I've got I've got him having the edge in the grappling. Um, Adesanya the edge in the striking, but I think if uh, Robert mixes it well with some takedowns, uh, he can he can either catch catch uh, Adesanya or or just outpoint him for the for the five rounds. That's what I, that's what I see. So, but I, I think it's going to be a awesome fight. Very, very, yeah, definitely. Um, very technical. Very uh, game plan. Whoever sticks to their game plan the best, I think, wins. Yeah, but I got Robert. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge, huge fight. Well, you know, you got your fight coming up September seventh, Eternal MMA forty seven in your hometown, Perth. Thank you, Ryan, for the time, man, and uh, good luck on Thank you. your fight and your future, man. And uh, well, maybe we'll get in a chat before your DFC fight. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's always a pleasure to be on the show. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you.